All right, so we're using M Backdrop Loop and we are air playing from our Mac Studio to this uh, rather inexpensive TV here. And uh, we're just having some fun and playing around with it. So here you can see we've got a microphone using our waveform loop. And uh, it looks really cool. And Nick is just kind of playing around with picking it up, sitting it down, stuff like that. Really cool way to use M Backdrop Loop. Now we were able to experiment with a lot of different backdrops. The great thing about Backdrop Loop, of course, is the fact that it's looping. So we were able to just let that thing go. We looped it for seriously like 30 minutes or so in the timeline, and then we could just play around, have some fun, and know that it was gonna be there for our camera. Now, I do want to mention that we also had some RGB LED lights so that we could match the color in the room, the ambient light, to some of the colors that we were getting from M Backdrop Loop, and that just further enhances the look of these videos. All right, so obviously this tutorial is a little bit different. We're not necessarily going to be going over showing how to apply M Backdrop Loop. We do have a separate tutorial for that purpose. In this situation, we're actually showing you how to use M Backdrop Loop in a situation such as this, if you're using a TV or something as your background. So I wanted to show you how it looks whenever it is raw because there is a little bit of work that you need to do. So why don't we find one of the clips that we used? I know that this one is, uh, is one of the ones that we really liked actually right here. So I'm just going to bring this down into my timeline so that you can see it. And I want you to notice it looks much different from what you all saw in the intro. So there's a lot going on here. So what we're gonna do is we're just gonna go ahead and open up and let's kind of go in so we can talk about some of this stuff. So because we are on an LED screen and it is a quite an inexpensive one, we've got all of this happening where we're seeing our pixels on the screen. So the way that we were able to overcome this is pretty easy and it is with free tools. All right, first things first, let's go ahead and give this a quick grade. So we're over here in the color board and we're just gonna kind of crush those blacks just a bit, just so that we can hide a lot of the imperfections and things going on. Uh, now you'll notice we've got a light leak down here in the left corner. I'm going to add another color board really quickly. I'm gonna add a shape mask. We're gonna bring that over into our corner and let's just go ahead and we just crush those blacks as well so that we have gotten rid of that. Now you're still seeing all of these pixels here. So if we go over into our effects and let's just find our blur, we used focus. So let's drag that on and immediately you should notice that a lot of that stuff kind of disappears and goes away, smooths it all out. There's a little bit more work we need to do though. So we're gonna open up our focus and we can just use our on-screen controls and then we can adjust some of our parameters such as our softness, the emphasis. Let's go ahead and see where our width is so that we can make sure that the lens is the only thing kind of being uh, focused there. And then let's go ahead and do the height as well. So I really like that and then we can just soften it back out until we get something more like that. Much better, you can now see that all of those pixels that we were seeing earlier are now gone and it is playing back nice and smooth and we're not really getting any of those problems that we had earlier. So we did run into this issue basically on every single shot when we had an item laying down on the TV. However, we did have uh, a lot of success whenever we were using our TV as our true background there. You can see that we had it nice and blurred out because we've got the depth of field. We had our Emmy, uh, you know, about a foot or so away from the TV and then we just get that nice bokeh there. So let's just drag that into the timeline and then you can see that we weren't really having to deal with softening anything up because it was already nice and soft in the background. And there you have it, one unique way to use M Backdrop Loop. We hope to see you utilizing this technique. We can't wait to see what you can do with it. Again, this is George Edmondson with MotionVFX.com. Be sure to subscribe and we'll see you on the next one.